Parsha begins with the mitzvah of Yifas Toar, Eishas Yifas Toar. Kiseitei l'molchama alayvecha, when you go out to war on your enemies, the reisa v'shivya Eishas Yifas Toar. You're going to see a beautiful girl. Lakachto, Chalisha, Vesel Tech Vesacha, Vasa Siparna, Gilchas Rosha. You bring her into your house, you want to marry her. Famous Rashi. Lo Dibra Torah, Ella Kineged, Itzer Hara. The Torah is speaking to the Yetzir Hara. What do you mean, the Torah, the Torah is speaking toward the Yetzir Hara? About the Yetzir Hara. Toward the Yetzir Hara. Kineged Yetzir Hara. Rashi explains the Mara and Sota, it would be impossible for somebody to withstand the temptation of the Yetzir Sifas Torah. In the middle of the war, and this beautiful woman comes out, whatever. The Yetzir would be too overwhelming. So what does Hashem do? You can take the Yetzir Sifas Torah. He makes him mutter. Comes mutter. Lo dibra Torah, lo kenegedi Yetzir Hashem. shot, simple meaning, is that it's less than ideal. Less than ideal what you're doing. But Hashem, you know, Kaviyah almost had no choice, right? <laughs> what are going to do? And if leave it us, sir, the people are going to do a virus. Okay, reluctantly, it'll become mutter. Now, that's a pretty strange idea, right? To understand it that way is a bit strange. What do you mean? Really, it should be us, sir. Since the human being can't withstand the temptation, we'll make him mutter. I mean, less than ideal, I don't think that could be the right, correct way of, of understanding. And furthermore, Frek the Swasamas, Vahaloi Hayamutov Shalolases Koach Lietzer Hora Lahasiso Luza? Why doesn't Hashem just take away the power of the Yetzer Hora to convince the fellow to do this Avera? Just remove the temptation. Shem knows how to remove the eight or horror of Gili Arayos, so the Gemara and Sanhedrin explains that the Anshe Knesset Dol even tried to do that. And they removed the eight or horror of, of Gili Arayos, but they had to put it back because people weren't going to even live with their wives and chickens weren't producing eggs, etc. No Chidushim. So, Kalape, the Asia Zivas Torah, why didn't the Torah? just permit, just not permit, as opposed to permitting, just remove the temptation of the fast tower. So A, sounds a little strange to say that that it should be a less than ideal or kaviyocho, we have to, you know, twist, you know, okay, I'm not going to say twist Hashem's arm because that would be wrong to say, but, but like, you know, that idea that 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 oh, what can he do? The human being's not capable, so Hashem had to. Doesn't sound right. And second of all, he could have taken the other option, which was remove the temptation. So some is discussion. So some of that is a brilliant insight. So some of that is not. It's not less than ideal. It's not what lo dibra Torah el kenegedi Torah means. And he brings a Balatanya. The Balatanya in Sefer Tanya explains, right, the Alter Rebbe, they call him, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe. And Sefer Tanya, in, in Tanya explains the Lashen of Isr. What, is the, what does the word Isul mean? What is Mutter or Heter? What does that mean? So Osr means what? Prohibition. Prohibit. That's not really what the word means, though. Asul means 
what does it mean? So it's known uh, something that is forbidden to, to do. No, that's 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 in context. But what's the root of to the word? To be imprisoned. To be imprisoned. To be imprisoned. Sure, sure. Like, like yeah, so yeah, means so. to tie right. somebody down, literally, right? Somebody who's who's in prison is called yes, beit sure. atzurim, right? So it means tie down, tie down right. to something. Lahatir means to, to permit, untie. Untie. To permit is the con in context, but the shorish of the word means to untie. That's what to free the, up. The, to, free up. to free up. What does that mean? To tie down and to untie from what? Ah. Uh, that's the problem. So, explains the Balatanya that when a person does a maisa iser, an act that is forbidden, he becomes tied yes. to the physical portion of the act. Mm -hmm. In a maisa iser, there's no ruchnis. We were put down in this world to elevate every physical action. When the action is something which is forbidden, it cannot be elevated. The person who does it is tied down to the maisa, to the physical. Yeah. Lahatir means when it's permitted, when the rabbi says that chicken, mutar, what does that mean? Untied? Untied what? It means that by eating the chicken, you're able to elevate that chicken into a Dover Ruchni into something spiritual. It becomes untied from its physical existence. So do you though. Yeah. Through it. But is there not also in in the negative connotation when you're tied to the physicality, by definition are you not necessarily isn't there a negative connotation spiritually? Yeah, because you become you become close but you to, you become physical. But is it is it Humidic. Humidic. Yeah. You, is it, you, is you it distance you, yourself from the shadow. Okay, so is it that you don't become closer or that you become farther? You become further away. Further away. By doing so, yeah, you are absolutely yeah. right. And therefore You're weighted down. You're weighted okay. down. You can't be close to a shepherd. You can't fly the whole out. Of the world. You can and that's what Yom Kippur is, uh, is, 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 is cutting all those chains that have tied you to the physicality to loosen you up so you can't pack up to the elevations you go to. And it's amazing how we're tied to our sins, to our chatayim. Mm -hmm. and, and there's such connection to them, and it's so hard to break up those connections. Right. And he explains with this idea that's, the, that's, that's what's going on with the fast Torah. Right? There's, there were two ways that Hashem could have gone here. He could have said, okay, no nisayon, right. no test, no temptation. Or he could have said, since the there's no test naturally, right? the human being can't withstand it, let's make it mutter so that the action, which is seemingly an action of very um, cheap physical pleasure, becomes elevated to a high degree. And Hashem chose the ideal. Which is, in this situation, since it's not going to be a test either way, Hashem decided that it was going to be a maisa. Really, divra Torah ela kinegadi yetzer hara. That seems like it's a freebie then. I mean, I don't, I mean not, not it becomes a mutar. It's just like a chocolate wafer. I'm saying it's also a freebie. <laughs> right? <laughs> But you, you, you know what I'm saying? It becomes mutter. And you're able to elevate that low physical, right? In every action, there's a spiritual spark. But the Shadi Pastor still might not agree to the marriage. Okay. So you have to say it's a very temporary state. That's why. I think this is just a drush, but the Sosama says that the that the second parsha in this week's 
The second topic is mm. the, the woman that that uh, I'm not sure, but the the yes, the woman, right? No, first the woman right, who right. you despise, exactly. right? And then, and then the, right, then the child who becomes a ben Tzoramar. Mm-hmm. And Rashi explains the hemshech of the psukim, yeah, yeah. right? If oh. if you take the yafas Torah, then you're going to end up hating her. Right. You're going to end up hating. And then you're going to end up having a child that's a ben Tzor from. So, so the, so the, the ben rebellious Tzor, child who's taken child. out and killed. So Rashi explains this idea. You know, you're going to end up hating her. So someone says, "What does he mean? You're going to end up hating her? Because you're going to end up." That's what he says. Mm-hmm. What the Susanus hopefully means to say, if we got it right, is that when Hashem made this act mutter, now you end up ha- hating the act. It's almost like, yeah. you know, sometimes you indulge yourself and then you, you end up. Ugh, you know, like I, I wish I hadn't done that, right? Right? Not because it's Osir was against the Torah, but because you feel like, okay, it was Mutter, but I could have been above that, right? I could have elevated myself and not and abstain, abstained completely. Because it's because it became Mutter, and there's something which is Mutter, which is a very mundane act, a low kind of an act, therefore you're going to hate it. Because you understand, because you're an elevated person. I'll leave that. But the idea is that lo divra tara ela connected to hara means that the tachlis of this world, the purpose of the world is to elevate the maisa. And that ideally what Hashem chose from the fast Torah try to understand it a little bit more. The end of this week's parsha. Zoharis Asher Asalakha Amalek Baderach Bitaischem and Mitzrayim. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way out of Egypt. Asher Korcha Baderach, he happened upon you, he attacked you, cooled you off. Bayizanev, Bukhokal and Achasholima Acharechova Ata Oyev via game. What's Kolan Achasholima Acharecha? He was tired, he railed, he wasn't even in fear of Hashem. Yeah. Right? And then Hashem says, you have to destroy Amalek, Sishkach. What's the significance of that? You know, Zechira is something that's constant. Yeah. Right? Zohar, as Zohar remember. is, you have to remember, and you have to remember all the time. Right? It's a great opportunity. You get a mitzvah for remembering yeah. to, to destroy Amalek. Right? But it's something that has to be on our minds always. Now, fine. We understand that it's an important idea. Amalek attacked us when we were going away from uh, out of out of Mitzrayim. All of the nations of the world were afraid of us. They cooled us off, so to speak. They they were the ones who jumped into the the boiling bath. But why is it so important that one has to always remember Amalek every single day of their lives? Yeah. It sounds like it's a fundamental part of our belief system, and it is. Milchama Hashem Ba'amolik, right? Hashem always have, has a war with Amolik. In Kisoy Sholem, in Shemoy Sholem, Kiyod Al Kais Ka, Milchama Hashem Ba'amolik Ludor right? Case ka in kisoy shalem, his throne will not be complete. His name will not be complete until we completely wipe out any kind of zecher of Amalek, any remembrance, any mashahu of Amalek. What was? What is the the fundamental idea of Amalek that we're that we're trying to annihilate? The medrash eicha Amar of Levi. Amr of Yochanan. Shahayu noitlim milo seem shall ye stroil. Kolanecha sholem acharecha means what did, what did Amalek do? They would take the foreskins of the Jewish people. The Orla. 
of the Jewish people. Umezarkin osan kalpe mala, and they'd throw it to the he- heavenward. Vomrim bazebacharta. You, Hashem, chose this. Heilacham mashibacharta. Take back what you chose. Here's what you chose. Almost like to degrade the whole yeah. idea of Rasmila. Besmirch it. Besmirch it. Ramesh Shapiro and Sefer Mimamakim mm. explains that we see from this Medrash that Amalek believes in Hashem. Right? If you didn't believe in Hashem, you I'm wouldn't take you. the foreskins and throw it up and say, here, take, it back. take take what you what you chose. So what were they doing? Was spitting in his face. Yeah, but what were they doing? They believed in him. So if they believed in Hashem, what were they doing with the throwing up the foreskins? A symbol lies in the end. What symbolizes the end? What symbolizes the end? What symbolizes the end? What were they trying to say? The Gemara in Nidarim on page 32 says, Gidoila Mila. Mila is great. Shu Mole Mila. Had it not been for Mitzvah's Mila, circumcision, Loniskaimu Shamayim Varetz. The heavens and the earth would not possibly be held up. Exist. Mm-hmm. exist. Shinamar? Because it says, how do you know that's true? You should know this. Anybody know? Imloi Brisi Imam Vulaila Who goes Shamayavar to If not for my treaty, who goes the laws of the heaven and the earth, the laws of nature, I wouldn't put. If not for the bris, says the Gemara, the heavens and the earth cannot exist. What does that mean? That means that the heavens and the earth exist only because of bris and how is how are mitzvos? How is that taught to us? How is that explained? Mila. Why is Mila? Why is Mila the kiyum of Shemayim Baaretz? Ah. Okay. What does Mila really symbolize? Really? I would no. say the opposite. No. I'd say Mila on on you know the on the aver, on the limb of a person that's yeah, most associated with Taiva. But that's how does that purity? Discipline. That's, the, that's the discipline. It's taking away it's your, from your ultimate pleasure. So it's saying, I'm taking away for you, Hashem. It's like disciplining. It's putting a cap on the problem. Putting it, limiting. It's a limitation. Just That's what it is. Right? It's or a limitation. Or in some elevating. Way. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Ian on this one. I think it's more than discipline. It might be discipline. You know, that yeah. that depends. But, but the, but the the idea that even the the even even the limb, which is most associated with physical pleasure and temptation and avera, right? Even that was created. To elevate for, for for spirituality for Hashem. But it says the Arizal says that Shomer Bris Mila is the meat of your sight. Of your sight, your sight. Mm-hmm. So if that's the meat of your sight, your sight is Shemaim Va'aretz. Right. There you go. Now what's Shemaim Va'aretz? Why is your sight Shemaim Va'aretz? Shemaim Va'aretz is that. Aretz, right? Gosh. Shemayim v'aretz. Shemayim v'aretz meet somewhere. Horizon, the spiritual right? horizon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horizon. they got to meet somewhere. Yeah. There has to be some sort of integration between the Shemayim and the Aretz. And it's just symbolic. I mean, the whole world, just look out and you and you realize that that the Aretz becomes Shemayim. And that's really the essence of all mitzvahs, which is that every Dovar Gashmi can become Ruchni. 
or if you want to explain it perhaps in different words, every Dover Gashmi can meet Ruchni, has within it a Dover Ruchni. And I can do something which is mundane and really essentially I'm doing something spiritual, something which has a purpose, something which is eternal. I'm accomplishing. But we also, we also you know, it, it's in Kabbalah, it has another, because it's a thought, practically it's, it's, it's cut a blockage in order to, uh, all, to passing all the all the sphero down to Malkut. Okay. So practically from Shammai, you know, to uh, That's right. But the we key, the key. Sure from you. Yeah. I, I believe only you're sure this. that Ruch is spirituality and Gashmi is cannot coexist except Hashem made it coexist right. within us. Correct. So that's the whole bracha. Us. So the, that's the whole thing right there. Is that we have we Asher Yetzar. The whole bracha of the Asher Yetzar. Elevate everything that's Gashmi. Correct. We have that ability. Right. So therefore, what is a Malik doing? What is a Malik doing? We're going to get back upstairs. Right? What are they trying to say? Their Taina is no. Aretz is Aretz. Shemaim is Shemaim. Yeah, there's a God above. There's definitely a God above. But He's above. Things we do here have no connection to Him whatsoever. But more importantly, He has no connection to us. That's what they're saying. They say both, yeah. Yeah, I was going to explain that. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> when we say the Mishnah at the end of Rosh Hashanah, Vahaya Kasher Yarim Moshe as Yadav Vagavra Yisrael, Vahaya Kasher Yaniach Yadav Vagavra Amalek. If Moshe would raise his hands up, then the Jewish people would would win. And if he lowered his hands, then Amalek would win. win. And the Mishnah asks, Vichi Yadav Shal Moshe Osos Melchama. With the hand, the hands of, of control the Moshe battle. Rabbeinu controlling the battle. So the Mishnah answers, no. When Moshe Rabbeinu lifted up his hands, Ella, Mizman Shiyusrol, Mistalkin, Kapei Mala. If they would look right. up and see Hashem, how you know them? You love how you know them. What does it mean? What does it mean? If the Bnei Yisrael would realize that everything they do down here is Kapei Mala is connected to something about then they defeat the whole concept of a Malik. Right. If they don't realize that, then they're lost. How you know for them? They're lost. If not, then a Malik then the idea of a Malik wins. So exactly. The the not all right, Hashem every ha, Hashem has the 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 even the aver caught even this 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 lib that is most associated with taiva and and desire that that's godly that's got connected to Hashem every thing that that aver does can be kulay ruchni can be completely spiritual not only that but the opposite is is true as well that Hashem has Everything in this world, Hashem has influence on. Hashem is connected. And if we see that, everything we do is godly, and even God has associ- has association has has complete is is completely integrated into the physical world. It's not above Him, as some philosophers might have argued. Why would uh, such a great God have uh, why would we matter to him why would we matter to him that was what Amalek was fighting against Amalek is gematria something Savik. doubt what is doubt doubt means there's something that's not clear <laughs> there's something that's not clear over here there's something that's not mechuvan we can't see through it there's no clarity. There's no. It's not for sure. It might be. That's what they try to to impregnate the world with. This doubt, and that's the gallus that we're in today. In the times of the Beis Hamikdash, everybody was completely focused, completely focused on their avodas Hashem. Everything that they did was 
Chor Hashchina. It was for for godliness to bring godliness. That was it was so uh, it was there it was obvious it was apparent. Yeah. Galus, Safik. Well, it's easier, much easier in Galus because just by the term Galut, Hashem says I'm hiding myself. So when Hashem's not there. That means the light isn't taken away. That's right. When the light's been taken away, it's automatically, by definition, spiritually dark. If it's spiritually dark, you can't see well. Yeah. When you can't see well, there's lack of clarity. Right. Lack of clarity automatically breeds suffolk. And you can just see the world outside is totally in suffolk. That's you... why a malik is asher karcha bederach. Kuziah. Karcha is the shoresh of mikra. Yeah. Happenstance. It happened. It just happened. Serendipity. Coincidence. Coincidence. It's not connected to any master plan. That's what it means. Kiyar al kis ka. Ein kisay shalim. Ein shemoy shalim. Why? What is kisay shalim and shemoy shalim? So Rav Sadaka Koyin in Rasisei Laila explains that the, the first two letters of Hashem's name, yud that's the two letters of, of, the, of the ultimate God, of the God Be'el Yoinim. And the vav K is are the letters which... It, which that God is even betachtonim, is even here awesome. on this world. Awesome. The Yud K, a little Kabbalistic. Yud K is the hidden part of Hashem's name. Vav K is the is the is the apparent part of Hashem's name. That's what he explains. Fine. That which Hashem is above exists also in Golas. Yud K. Yeah. That which Hashem is below is ain't ain Shemar Shalim. That's the Koach of Amalek. That's what Amalek has done. And similar to the idea of Kisei. A Kisei means a throne, yeah. literally. Right? A resting place for the king. So yeah, the king is there. But is this world a resting place for the king? Amalek says no. Ain Shmoy Shalim, the Ain Kisei Shalim. Mm -hmm. The tour explains in Simon Nunvov the Kaddish. Yiskado Yiskada Shmei Rabba. Yeah, it's great. Name. It will become Yiskada, it will become very great. Very great. Yiskada and become sanctified. Shmei Rabba, the great names. Be Oma Divrach Rusei, be Amlich Malchusei. In the world, which he will create and become the the king over, right? And then we all answer Yehi Shmei Rabba. The Torah explains what does it mean Yiskada Yiskada Shmei Rabba. He says that the Shmei Rabba, the shame of Yud K exists in this world, will become a Shmei Rabba in the Ace Hagula. When says the Torah. When we take revenge from Amalek, because Hashem's name is not Shalim, until we completely annihilate Amalek. And when that happens, it's Yiskado Yiskada Shmei Rabba. His name will be Yurkei Vavke, meaning, just as in the times of the Beis HaMikdash, the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Beis HaMikdash, was his throne. He was here on this world. Anybody who walks into the Beis HaMikdash felt the Kedusha being pumped into their veins. Mm. That will happen again. Hashem's name will become great. That's why the Swarim say that when you say Yehei Shmei Rabba, Yehei, you should have in mind Mechia Zamolik. Yehei Shmei Rabba, you have to have in mind, what is Yehei Shmei Rabba? Because Yehei Shmei Rabba Mevorach. His name, behold, will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Who's finished with that?
that is Reb Tzadok HaKoyen in Yusisei Loyla and Reb Moshe Shapiro and Mima Makin. So he said, just together. just to summarize, at the end he said, with the with the Vav Hey, at the time, it's only at the time of Mashiach. I'm sorry, the, the Kaddish you meant? Yeah. Yeah, that's the tour. Yeah. The tour Shulchan <coughs> He says, uh, uh, because when we do the Kaddish, that's talking about when Mashiach is here. Yehei, the uh, should be, his name shall be great. Yehei, Mashiach Samalik, yes. Shmei Rabba. When that happens, the Shmei Rabba. Because Amalik represented the disconnect, the suffix, the happenstance. Hmm. Hmm. Right, what's Tumas carry? Ah, uh, that's the uh, discharge. Yeah. The tumor says it's twenty. Discharge. What, what's the tumor? Why is it impurity? Because it's a discharge which has so much potential. Right, and it's which is wasted. wasted. Right, that potential of having a child is wasted. That's why it's called carry. Asher karcha v'derech. Right, nah, our potential, just waste. Waste your potential. There's, you can't impregnate your actions with spirituality. That's what Amalek stands for. Ein kisoy shalem, ein shmoy shalem. And that's what we pray for all the time. No, Amalek. Every single one of our actions is deeply embedded with ruchnius, with spirituality. Every maisa, every act, even if it seems to be mundane, even if it's aishas yifas toar, it's deeply embedded with ha'aras of ruchni, is with sparks of ruchni. What we're doing is the rotsan Hashem. What we're doing is making Hashem happy with us. And we're being mistabik with Hashem, even though it seems to be the opposite. Hayitoka shoifar the ear. Va'am who could not blow Yeharadu. Yeah, who could not fear? Should a shoifar blow in the city and the nation will not tremble? Before the shear began, we talked a little bit about a, a tragedy that happened the ear in our city. In the city, there was a tragedy this week. A young man with a young wife and three young children, that young man tragically drowned. Yes. So. Tremendous sorrow and pain so. for the family, for everybody who knew him. Mm. I knew him too. I remember him from Yeshiva, I remember him from, I met him recently too. But Hayitaka shoifar be'ir va'am lo yecharadu. Does a tragedy happen? The shoifar blows. The warning signs. Is the nation not going to sh- to tremble? Uru yeshene mishinaschem. People who are we're in our slumber. We're, we're we're sleeping. We're all sleeping. We're all sleeping. Does it take a tragedy to wake us up? We know back from Parshas Chukas, Al Kain Yomru, Hamoishlim, Bohu Cheshbon, Tibona Vesikone and Ir Sichon. The Gemara in Bava Basra on page seventy-eight says, Hamoishlim, Al Kain Yomru Hamoishlim. Who are the Moishlim, the rulers? Elu Hamoishlim the Yisrael. These are the people who know how to control their evil, their inclinations. Bohu, right? Cheshbon. Let's go literally. Let's go to Cheshbon. The year, the year, right? The year Sichon was called Cheshbon. But Vohu v'nechashev b'Cheshbono shel Olam. Let's go and make a calculation with the Cheshbon of the world. The Gemara says, "Hefsid mitzvah keneged tzara." What a person loses from not doing a mitzvah relative to the, 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 the little hana that you gain because you were lazy. And the 
schar avera keneged hafseda, and the little bit of, of 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 enjoyment that you got from doing the avera against weigh that, make a cheshvin, calculate that against the infinite worlds that were lost because of that avera. Tibana v'sikonen ir sichon. If, it says the Gemara, Yimata Osef, you make a cheshvin. If a person makes this calculation, Tibana ba'olam hazeh v'sikonen ba'olam haba. That's how the Gemara makes a drush from the, from the Pasuk. Alkein yomru ha-moshlim bo'u cheshvon. We have to make a cheshvin. You have to make a calculation. I, I, I read in uh, one of the books, that exactly what it's called, is um, from the author of Touch by a Story, one of oh. his books. Yeah. So, the spiral. 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 So, I, I, I saw a, an amazing, amazing machshava there, which really spoke to me. Which, uh, he says he was sitting in a class once from, and listening to a fellow called Avi Shulman. The fellow. And, Part of the, the class was an interactive class, and he said that this teacher says that the, the students who are adults should go home and write down their ten, ten goals which they have from their first, that they, sh they, that, that, that they have which they will reach in their first ten years of marriage. Ten goals from their, from their, from their and the, the students who are all adults, they, they're looking at them, 10 goals that they should write. He says, what do you mean, you don't have goals? Hmm. And the author says, and he says, every businessman knows that when you, you want to be successful in, in, in business, you have to have a strategy. Right? You have to have a mission statement. A strategy, a mission statement. Where am I going? Where am I going? Right? And then I have to build a business plan. How am I getting there? What are the steps that I need to take in order to achieve my goal? And then you'll have a successful business. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You just act on whim. You're not sure where you're going, what direction you're taking. You will get lost. You get lost. You will not be successful. It's, it's, it's business class 101. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Failing to make a plan is planning to fail. And yet, we find ourselves, you know, Bo Cheshvon. Yeah, we've heard the words Cheshvon and Efesh before. Definitely, you know, everybody's heard that. But Bo Cheshvon, have we made a calculation? Have we set goals for ourselves? What am I going to, what kind of goal, where do I want to be at the end of this coming year? Do I want to know a Masechta of Gemara? Do I want to know a parak of Gemara? Do I want to make sure that I'm a person who's Kovea Itim La Torah? Mm. That learns Set every times. single day? Set times. Do I want to make sure that at the very least I, I go to chakras before work? Do I want to become that person? Yeah, it might not be exactly where I'm holding now. I've got to start slow. Yeah. But Gotta let hold. me set that goal for myself. And then a plan. How am I going to get to that goal by the time that I want to get that? Bo Cheshvon. Otherwise, we're going to stay. People don't stay static, by the way. It's only going it's up, or down. up or down. Up or down. You don't stay where you are. I'm holding. I'm holding. I'm comfortable where I am. No. You're going up or down. That's it. Yeah, we're comfortable. But this is our lives. This is our entire existence. This is our purpose in this world. We need to be able to accomplish. And yet, none of us have a plan. None of us? Oh, you got a plan. But we don't have a plan. Where do we want to go? How are we going to get there? You know, in, if you had a business, not only would you have a plan, yeah. but it would be on paper. Yeah. Not only would it be on paper, it would be nicely printed, probably in a nice booklet, a few pages long, right? To be presented to your investors. 
or whoever you need to, the bank. to, yeah. to make sure that the business is going to go properly. And we don't. Oh, many of us don't. Some of us don't. Well, however you want to say it. We just don't. We don't we care more about our businesses than our lives. Every action that we have it, and that we take is an opportunity of Avodah Hashem. Can be elevated. It's not only davening. It's not only learning. It's every single action can be can be directed lamala to above. But we have to be bo cheshbon. We have to come into cheshbon. It shouldn't take a tragedy to awaken us to that. Lo aleinu. We should just tell the Rabbana Shalom, Rabbana Shalom. We'll do it for you. We'll work on ourselves. We'll elevate our, we'll elevate our Maisim. Just bring us Simchas. Yeah. Simchas. Bring us Nachas. We have to realize it's not only Frank that has connections. We all have connections. And just like, just like, we've got to find out. Just like, you know, we're all busy. You know, the people that are, you know, politically inclined, they're busy trying to lobby Obama. You know, please give. Uh, you know, give a pardon to Shalom Rabashkin and to, um, yeah, the, you know, the... Jonathan Pollard. Jonathan Pollard, thank you. Please, you know, but try to lobby. And you need, you need people with good connections. You can't just lobby and you're, you know, you can't, you, nobody's going to listen to you. We have to realize it's not only Frank that yeah, has connections. Not only Frank. We've got connections. We've got connections because we're connected. We just have to make sure that we're connected. We've got to pick up the phone a couple of times a day and call in and say, how you doing? Every action that we take, that's another hello there. I'm here. I'm your friend. I'm, I'm your servant. I'm connected. And if we do that, then we can ask, and we have the right, we have the ability, the right, the ability to ask for a pardon. For us, for our friends, for our family, for the people of our city, for those who are suffering, and for Gantz Claudius Rolf. Let us work on ourselves. Let us work on those connections so that Amir Tashem, this Rosh Hashanah, can be powerful. And we can lobby, so to speak, with the Rabbinah Shalom. Last Rosh Hashanah, there were some tough Xeris. Mm. Oh, yeah. That were decreed. Toughies. Whatever happens until this coming Rosh Hashanah was decreed last Rosh Hashanah. And we have the power, this Rosh Hashanah, to improve ourselves so mm. that the Rabbana Shalom will give pardon to all of Kla Yisrael. Amen. 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 Amen.